I just wanted to cover a dark and gritty Half-Life 2 mod, but after playing this one, I am no longer the same man I once was. This is part 2 of 3 of the Rad Hat Cinematic Special Series. In my last video about the cinematic mod, I concluded that while the mod definitely has some good things in it, a lot of it is overshadowed by its many critical problems. But what if I told you that almost a decade ago, there was a mod being made that was supposed to combine the dark and gritty universe of the beta with the cinematic mod. I mean that sounds like such an amazing idea, beta but fully packed to the brim with detail and expanded maps and locations. Well, it's not like that. Because this mod might be just one of the biggest letdowns I ever played. In my mind, Build 2046 was this mythical and amazing beta mod that got shelved out of nowhere. But oh boy, how wrong I was. If you go to ModDB, you'll see that someone has uploaded this mod for archival purposes. Now it's good of them to upload it there, but the latest version they have is 4.0, while the latest version I found was 5.30. In fact, the archive I downloaded from... Well, to be honest, I had it on my hard drive for so long, I have no idea where I downloaded it from, but it's a 50 gigabytes archive that extracts to be 77 gigabytes in size, and it has every single version of the mod on there, from version 1 to version 5.30. Quick side note, in this video, I will skip through a few of the versions and will be showing you the gradual changes that happened, plus the most notable and interesting sections of each version of the mod. So, sit back, relax, grab some crack, as we dive deep into Build 2046. Immediately as I started work on this project, I got hit with a major roadblock. Neither version 1 or version 2 worked. Like, they just didn't boot up. But whoever made the archive I was using had some screenshots and other bonus items in there. And in there I found these screenshots. Version 1 feels like it just ports the leaked maps into the modern source engine. Version 2 feels like a very minor update. Ported beta maps, but now they have new stuff added on top most notable being the Quarry Town map being filled with grass and trees. This was not a good sign. All of this was unimpressive to say the least. Where's the details, the endless props to make it feel dense, the different looking character models and so on. This doesn't feel cinematic at all. But okay mod, since these are the earliest builds, I'll give it a pass and say that the devs were trying to find their footing in the project. Who knows, maybe version 3 would be a significant upgrade. And that brings us to... Version 3.90. Here we have chapters like... Uh, Station, Terminal, Labor, Arcade, and Luftwarmetauscher, and Flucht, and Zitadel. Yeah, the dev team was mostly German and Russian on this. Let's kick things off with the first chapter, the E3 maps. And oh look, it's that E3 2002 Ravenholm map. We have a shiny crowbar and the zombies sound weird. Off to a great start, I guess. <laughs> Now this shit right here, every version of build 2046 has this, when a level is supposed to change they'll do this weird fade to black and in some cases just teleport you to the next area. Like for example if you come across a door and instead of using funk door and hammer they just teleport you to the other side of the door. The next map starts and some really somber music starts playing. I'm scared to play it for you because I don't want the copyright to get me. All versions of this mod has a grand total of 5 music tracks. 
a somber instrumental which makes me imagine I lost a war against the Romans or something, the Dark Knight theme, the Dark Knight credits theme, and I'm pretty sure the fourth one is also from the Dark Knight. And I think I heard a Lord of the Rings soundtrack in there too. And hold on, is that a proper USP match? No laser sight, no broken animations, now that's based. So far, I don't see anything changed or updated too much. Let's go to the next map. Oh, it's that Hydra map. Alright, so far looks good and everyone's speaking German. Hmm. Wait a minute, was that? Oh. Oh no. Ah, the Uprising demo. Again, I don't see anything that different from the original. Maybe some new geometry, some different textures, but nothing that impressed me. Alright, the prison demo. Again, nothing too different. The Combine do appear to be wearing that cinematic mod style SWAT armor though. That's cool. So the game bugged out here and the level transition didn't happen. Let's just skip to the main part of the mod. Starting off with the intro. Oh no, it's the Tic Tac Man and he speaks German now. Der rechte Mann am falschen Ort kann in der Welt viel bewegen. Get away from me. This is what I'm talking about. Dingy ass looking train compartment. Some random movie soundtrack in the background and of course a dark as hell skybox. Surprisingly, the mod doesn't use cinematic mod assets as much as I thought. The civilians look strange though, as if their skin is stretched back, but hey, at least they somewhat resemble their original counterparts. What also is strange is that this is the retail train station map, not the beta one, but I'll give it a pass cause it's been retextured to look like a beta one. I think Barney is using the episode 1 skin, which makes him look much more miserable. Okay. I can see the fake factory influence now. Alright, no terminal area, on to the next map which is terminal. Hmm, the classic beta terminal map, dark and grittified, lots of trees, no clock, and no citadel? Well yes, of course there's an invisible wall here, right in the middle of this open passage. You can immediately see what the mod added itself because the quality of the map immediately dips in these new areas. And is that Father Grigori? What's he doing here? Alright, let's do the routine. Get on the platform, get to the other side of the map. Dude, why is this invisible wall here? You could have just closed the gate and stopped the player like that instead. Attention Universal Union. This is your console speaking. It has come to my attention that a detachment of experimental treatments has gone completely fucking ancient and are now killing anything associated with us. They can be easily identified by their distinct orange colors. If you encounter one, then be sure to brutally murder it. Thank you for listening and have a progressive day. Well, that message from the console was something. But yeah, this is just the industrial map, retextured and mildly touched up. And did they seriously put the cinematic mod Highway 17 crane machine in here? That doesn't make any sense. I also found cinematic Alex just standing here doing absolutely nothing at all. But I have to rate this mod 10 out of 10 because it has everyone's favorite beta feature. Child labor. Manwich was in there too. Manwich, what are you doing in here? And no, I'm not gonna say anything about the new Alex model. Some of you said this is perfectly fine. So this is perfectly fine. So far, I feel very underwhelmed by the mod, like it's three things so far. Beta maps, retail maps, and a little bit of originality. All Frankenstein together to create a mess. Like this area, it's supposed to lead us outside and then to Kleiner's lab underground, but now it leads us to the retail apartment block? What? The work done on touching up the beta or retail maps isn't that good either. Those quote unquote new and original maps or sections added to maps just don't look that good. The main issue with this approach is that the whole experience becomes this jagged mess where you keep shifting from one theme to another. Like right after this apartment block, we get shifted to Root Canal? Kleiner's lab was supposed to play out before this area. Another issue is that while retail maps have signposting to let the players know where to go, 
and are also designed in a way that naturally funnels the player to the next location, the beta maps were, well, unfinished, which is obvious. The mod doesn't add any sort of enhancements to the beta maps, no signposting, no funneling to let the player know where to go. You'll see a lot of this issue later in the video. Root Canal's starting area where you save the woman from the Metro Cops is removed completely and is replaced with this weird platforming puzzle. Remember when I told you the mod doesn't know how to do level transitions? Take a look at this. Wow. Fun fact, I was playing the mod on easy difficulty and then this happened. The changes made to the gameplay absolutely ruin every single encounter you have at the Combine, especially when the soldiers are using the AR-2 pulse rifle. If you come across them, you are just done. Oh look, more Frankenstein Half-Life 2 maps. Yeah, the Frankenstein nature of build 2046 starts to get irritating really quick. And to whoever thought plopping in 20 man hacks in a single room was a good idea, I hope you stub your toe on a table and fall down the stairs. And the game crashed. Alright, next map. So the cinematic mod added in like, you know, trees and ferns to Nova Prospect. Guess what build 2046 adds on top of that? Rocks, of course, big fucking rocks. But apart from that, there's not a whole lot to say about the outside areas. Inside, however, we get to fight two antline guards back to back. Oh yeah, the AR2 is now a FN2000, I think. After the mod bugged out again, I skipped to the next map. And now we are in Eli's Den. Why are we in Eli's Den? Well, let me get back to you on that in version 4. But I'll be quiet now, because I want you to see this whole combat encounter and how messed up it is. This one soldier took away 80% of my health. What the fuck? The Metro Cops are insta-kill. Soldiers and elites, however, take forever to die. Then if they're using the AR-2, it's basically game over. What kind of mumbo-jumbo gameplay balancing bullshit is this? Alright, let's try the Canale chapter. Well, no, this doesn't look like any canals I've ever seen. My deduction skills tell me this is a helicopter. To be continued? And now we're in the middle of a ship's graveyard. I'm not gonna lie, I actually kinda like this specific map, or at least the theme of it. The visuals like the edge of the map looks bonkers, but apart from that, I really like the idea of the player going through a huge body of water where there's a dozen or so ships just lying there motionless. I don't remember this map from the beta, but it did remind me of this one screenshot. And the water kills you. Okay, next map. You know, for a world that has a literal air poisoning facility in it, the sky shore is clear and nature is definitely thriving. Also, the mod doesn't even use one of the better looking Quarry Town maps. The 2002 versions of Ravenholm would have suited this mod far better. I always felt this version of Ravenholm was designed to be a test map more than anything else based on this one concept art piece. But okay, beta Ravenholm, where will you lead me to next? Oh no fucking way, I traveled 10 feet and now we're in the mines already? And there's a minigun in here! I'm not gonna even question this! At the end of the mines, there's a lift and that lift takes us to... Icky Pop? If you don't know, Icky Pop was a test map or rather a joke map made by Half-Life's writer Mark Laidlaw. This mod really is taking whatever it can from the leak and just plopping it into itself, isn't it? This should be good. The Wasteland Chapter Amazing. So yeah guys, this is the wasteland from the beta. More like a waste of my fucking time. Alright, the depot. And it takes place at night. You know, I'm sensing a pattern here. 
Apart from the Frankenstein maps, the mod really does its best to make sure that the maps get ruined one way or another. The depot map took place at daytime because the fucking wasteland was the major spectacle of the whole place. You're supposed to see where the hell you are, but now, we're now in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And watch this, AR2 Combine Soldiers, instant death. This is the air exchange. No, I don't think you heard me. This is the air exchange. Imagine the surroundings around an air poisoning facility being this nice. A facility literally made to fuck up the environment. And now we have lush forestry. And hold on, are these the same fucking machines from the Highway 17 docks? While I'm truly open to mods making drastic changes to the world of Half-Life, be it retail or beta, there's just so wild about this whole setting that it's making me puke. It's making me feel that the mod is deliberately designed to piss people off. Okay, so then we end up in the tower where we are supposed to jump out? Everything else in between just isn't there. I have to again talk about the point I made earlier, about beta maps being unfinished obviously, so they aren't designed to be used in a game. A prime example are the beta air exchange maps. They're so vast, so huge and have next to no gameplay optimizations like signposting or any sort of guidance that tells the player where to go. One of the greatest things about both Half-Life 1 and 2 is that its maps naturally guide you to the next place without explicitly telling you. In these unfinished beta maps, that's not the case because obviously they're unfinished. What I wanted this mod to do was maybe, just maybe, enhance, improve the beta maps to a certain degree where we wouldn't be confused by the level we're playing, but instead they added fucking trees to the air exchange chapter. Anyway, now we're in the final air exchange level. You know where Gordon has to blow up the core? This removes a lot of the maps in between again. The mod gives us a minigun so we're basically invincible in this map. Hmm. Flucht? Oh no way. No fucking way. It's the Lost Coast in a beta mod. Why is this here? What business does Gordon have in St. Olga? Odell's here too? And why is there so much water in St. Olga? Didn't the sea dry it up? And everything's supposed to look like this? The worst part is that this is actually an amazing downgrade from the actual Lost Coast maps. All the lighting effects that made the original Lost Coast great are nowhere to be seen. Alright, the Borealis. This should be good. Why did I think it would look good? But yeah, this is one of the later versions of the Borealis maps. Also, yeah. Same thing with Kraken Base. Same old stuff we've seen many times, at least on this channel. Next is the Vertigo chapter. Okay, so in the beta, here's how things would go. From the Borealis, we would go to Kraken Base. From Kraken Base, we would go to the Weather Control Facility. From Weather Control, we would take an aircraft and go to the skyscraper, which was called Vertigo in 2001 and Palace in 2002. In the Vertigo version, we crash a goddamn C-180 into it. In the Palace version, we crash a helicopter into it. So in both versions, Gordon crashes an aircraft into a tower. And I know some of you are expecting a joke here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show some decency. Balls. Playing this, I realized how better other mods at the time did all of this instead. You know, other mods like Dark Interval or how about Raising the Bar or Cremation or Insolence or Terminus. The last two were unfinished and buggy as hell, but goddamn, they had some soul to them. Build 2046 feels like the outcast from this age of beta mods, something that just shouldn't exist. The lack of direction is apparent and shines through the maps in this mod. It is very clear whoever worked on this mod just kept working on it for the sake of it. What usually is done before starting a huge project like this is that you set up standards and do an outline of what the mod should have and should not have and you know, a plan. But the more I play this version of the mod, it feels like there was no plan, there was no direction. And if you work like that on a project, the foundations are always going to be very weak. So the next map is the rooftops during the beta uprising and the most apparent change in that map is that it has portals now for some reason. And of course the Half-Life 2 beta rooftop maps lead us straight into the retail anti-citizen 1 map of course, where else? I love it when I go from half complete maps to retail quality maps, it's the best. The last chapter in this is the Citadel, it basically goes like this. 
oh, here's the cinematic mod version of the Citadel, and then there's the beta map stitched in, and another one, and another one, and another one, and now we're at Breen's office, the end. Now I really wish this was the end, that I could do all of this and turn it into a video and upload it, but the D-Team had other plans. Now what we just looked at, version 3.90, that's something that I can describe as unhinged, weird, strange, and in some points, irritating and underwhelming. Version 4.91, however, is what I would call a mod that's been lobotomized. A mod that's basically high on crack and cough syrup. Now before I get started, I have to say a lot of the mod resembles the previous version we just looked at. What I'll be doing you is showing you the quote-unquote updates that were made to the mod. You know, the updates that would make the mod even better. Ah yes, the good old E3 maps. I don't understand why they have these maps as the first chapter though. They would be more suited as bonus maps to play at the end. And yeah, all the versions of this mod have bonus maps, but they're nothing to write home about. Apart from the classic tall grass from cinematic mod, I don't see anything significant done to the uh, map. Hold on, an MP5K? Hell yeah, now we're talking. But it only has 18 bullets and it shoots so slow. And why is it in the pistol category? Oh. Oh no. This is the pistol. It just looks like the MP5K for some reason. This is truly one of the most schizophrenic things I've seen in a mod. But yeah, these are the same E3 maps again, but now with more trees and some HDR. And oh boy, they really used a lot of HDR bloom in this version. Again, I appreciate the touch-ups here, I truly do, but it again feels like very much disjointed from the overall theme of the beta. Like one map is super dark and gritty like it's 2001, then a lot of it is bright and pretty like the 2003 stuff. Like look at this. And now look at this. I feel like it just doesn't fit. It doesn't feel consistent with itself. So the next chapter is Velkomin and it, hold on guys, it's currently Ladevor Gang Loft. So this chapter starts off in a train in what appears to be a totally new and original map. Now this is what I wanted to see more of, the team creating new and good looking maps for the mod like this. Sure it isn't the prettiest map ever but I love it, it's original. So now let's see where these stairs lead us to. And we're back in the 2002 terminal. Huh. <sighs> so the citizens have this new model where they have updated clothes. They kind of resemble the E3 2004 style, but uh, I feel like I'm stretching here. This new version of terminal definitely fixes the invisible wall issue and added more models in the map to make it more dense. But still no citadel though. So this time we go into the Father Gregory alley and move on to the next map. One thing I kinda don't get is why are there two types of citizens? Like normal retailish looking citizens and then there's gas mask citizens? If the air exchange is active, wouldn't all citizens be required to wear gas masks? What's the deal with that? And damn man, I think they need to add some more lens flare here. I don't think there are enough of them. Anyway, instead of going into the Manhack arcade, we get on the bus and we're teleported to another beta map. Sky's different, lens flare everywhere trees I guess, and a 3D skybox filled with Soviet block buildings. You know, in a map that looks like it's taking place in, I don't know, New York or something. Things like this, I just find it very irritating. And now we're in the fabrication street, we were just next to it a minute ago. You know, the terminal map literally starts from where fabrication street ends. Then what's with the bus ride then? What's with anything in this mod? So after finding the level transition, we end up in the same location. No really, that's where we were just a few moments ago. So I found Cinematic Alex and moved on to the next map. Kleiner's lab and what the hell? What's with this gigantic hole in the wall? What happened to the other side? Did the combine drop a nuke there? Kleiner of course now looks like this and it's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. 
Ugh. From the lab, we get sent to Boxcar Joe and his secret oiled up Vortigaunt lover. Oh look guys, they added in the Citadel into a map. Finally. Sure looks quite bright, I guess. Now you think they would have nerfed the room with the 5 million man hacks, but guess what? Guess what? They didn't. While it's not apparent in this level, the increased HDR and the intensity of the bloom again disturbs the overall visuals. Okay, so watch this. This is the Hydra demo map, right? It's also in the retail game too. This part specifically. Now it leads us to a plethora of different beta maps, all Frankenstein together to make absolutely no sense. It's a constant barrage of different maps all shuffled up. This isn't Root Canal. This is more like Root Poopy. Then I'm fairly certain we get teleported to a test map from the beta, but oh, this time around, there are hound eyes you can't kill, water everywhere that will instantly kill you, and this awesomely placed trap that I for the life of me couldn't figure out how to bypass. Then it sends us back to Retail Root Canal. Yippee! This map right here has this wide open area which I couldn't remember if it's in the beta or not, but given that the fucking depot is here, I'm certain that this is an original map for the mod. And if you can't tell what the problem is, the problem is that we're in City 17, or at least in the outskirts of the city. The depot, however, is supposed to be all the way out there in the wasteland. So the depot being right next to the city doesn't make a lick of sense. From there we go to this new underground area with not a whole lot to do and what the hell is this? This map right here is actually a beta map called D3 Under or something. And I think it had a Hydra in there too? Here, the blue tone mapping was a vibe for me, but I understand if this looks bland to most people. As for the map itself, I don't see any stark changes compared to the actual beta map, but I guess the ferns are new? Okay, I can already tell this is the canals map. Let's check it out and holy shit, pause. Just take in the atmosphere. Let's see what we're dealing with. Tall grass, of course, moss bright as shit skybox and oh you can't miss the big ass crashed airplane in the middle and is that is that the same crane machinery again what is it with this mod reusing this model of the crane machine everywhere this one is just floating in the sky but okay let's say hypothetically you and i both think this is fine like you and i both have gone insane what this map does next is truly one of a kind thing first look at these logs of wood okay Second, there's a sniper on that rooftop that you can't kill. Combine these two elements and what do you have? What kind of dog shit game design is this? The problem is that to dodge the sniper fire, you have to see where you're going. The logs have such an atrocious collision to them, they stop you in your tracks regardless of how you approach them. And then the tall grass doesn't help in any way because it actually ruins your vision, stopping you from figuring out a clear path to take. But yeah, 90% of every version of this mod, there is a lot of beta maps with a lot of useless or out of place changes made to it. Oh, this is promising. The airboat? A proper map maybe? And it's a retail map. Yep, this is Water Hazard just reversed and Frankenstein with other parts of Water Hazard. And oh god damn it. Check out this amazing enemy placement. Barnacles right in the middle of your path. No way to dodge them. You need to get out and kill them, then get back in the boat and then repeat the process. Also, the previous map was a reversed retail map, right? Well, the map right after is a reversed canal beta map from 2003. Reversed and Frankenstein at its finest. Later, we find a teleporter and get teleported to... The Amazon Forest. Wow! Yeah, if you thought the version 3 Raven Home was weird, check this one out. I don't think there's even anything to say about it. Most of this is the same, if not worse. We go to the mines and take the lift up and now instead of the wasteland, the lift takes us to... The root canal train tracks? I mean I get it that this is supposed to be a different location but ripping this whole segment out of root canal feels so weird. 
Now I don't know what location this monstrosity of a map is. I don't recall this from the beta nor the retail game. I don't recall this from anywhere. But I swear it looks so detailed that I refuse to believe that the mod authors made it themselves. Like starting off we break a box and a zombie pops out of it. And then there's a shotgunner right around the corner that does this. One of the things I heard online is that Build2046 actually stole some maps from other mods of the time. I don't know if that's true or false, that this claim has any validity, but if I were to go on a limb, I'd say it's most likely true. I feel like this is one of those maps. It's so well made at its foundation like at the beginning, but on the surface and as you progress, you know the devs did their touch-ups to make it much, much worse later on. Like in a room I found a battery, but where do I put the battery? In Half-Life 2, whenever this happens, you're shown the empty battery compartments first and then you need to search for them. Here I found the battery but nowhere to place it. This is basic game design at its absolute worst. Before skipping over to the next place, I wanted to check this place in detail and see what the hell this place was. Is this the depot? Nova Prospect? The prison? And then I saw two roller mines and absolutely lost my shit because I didn't have a gravity gun to do anything about them. I kept on no clipping to see all the new places but most of it was dark hallways with not much going on till I got to this point. Now unlike Half-Life 2, I haven't played the episodes that much but I'm pretty sure this is from episode 1. I swear I've seen this place before. Let me know in the comments if you know where this is from. Then it shifts us to the helicopter again. Now we have cinematic Alex with us but she's asleep from the looks of it. Wake up Alex, you're gonna crash the helicopter. Alex, no! Wait, are we in the canals again? Hold on, this is a new place, a new map, an original map? I can't believe it. And this is the start of Highway 17. You know where Winston gets shot? Then we meet up with Leon and I think he's schizophrenic because he's talking to air. This is supposed to be this mod's version of Highway 17 in a way. This time around you're in the wasteland. I will give points to the mod for having somewhat okay looking outside areas and of course they use the tunnel from Half-Life 2 and right after that there's a shit ton of cars on the road that you can't nudge out of the way easily. Then it does the whole Highway 17 thing where you have to go under the bridge, open the gate and come back. To be honest, I kinda liked the surrounding wasteland skybox but I really wish it wasn't as red as it is or at the very least didn't have too much glow. But as soon as I started to think that this mod might actually have an okay level in it, I reached this place. Let me remind you that only one of these AR2 Combine soldiers can kill you in like 2 or 3 shots on easy difficulty. So naturally, the mod adds like 20 of them in one area. I swear to god, I don't think anyone playtested this mod. The next map had some incredibly bad terrain on it, so I said fuck it and flew around to see what was up. I saw two names floating in the map. Captain Vance and Odell. So I first checked out this little crack house and see what was the good captain up to. Turns out he doesn't exist. I guess this is supposed to be a reference for the devs to add him in later. Then I went to Odell and it loaded the next level and I got in a boss fight with two gunships. In the middle of the ocean. In a small little boat. Nice. Now we land on some shore which basically leads us to snipers and landmines in the dark. This map basically serves as an introductory level to the depot slash prison chapter, which we already have established, looks and plays like absolute garbage. So I made it to the lighthouse, went downstairs and entered the prison area. And oh look, the mod gives us another original map with a broken skybox. Check this scenario out. Let me remind you again, it just takes one of these to kill you in a few seconds if you don't kill him first. Going up to this door, it says this door is locked so people in prison can't break out. Outstanding. There must be a control room that can open this door. Fascinating. So there is a door that leads us to an interior area. Pressing on, I found myself in a 2002 prison map that legitimately looked worse than its original counterpart. Press the button and the door opens. A level started which kinda looked new to me but after a few minutes I realized I was in a 2002 era prison map. Now what my problem is at this point, that if you're gonna use the beta maps, why bother with this garbage? Or if you want to do original maps, 
that are supposed to represent beta locations, then why this cringe? I'm not saying mixture of beta and original maps wouldn't work, it can work. Look at Coterminus or Dark Interval and Raising the Bar Redux. They have small bits and pieces of the beta maps in them that are perfectly blended together with the own original creations they made. But those mods do it in such a fine way that you can't really tell what's a beta map and what's a map that they made themselves. Here we have Door is Locked and then right after a 2002 prison map that Valve made. And oh look, we can see the depot in the skybox and another depot in the skybox. Why are there two of them? So last time the prison chapter was very small with a handful of maps in it. Here the prison chapter has been expanded a lot. Truth be told, there are some points in this chapter where I kind of liked the lighting and the atmosphere. It truly looked good. But then I saw that one of the floors in the prison was made out of shiny marble. What? And then the gameplay balancing of course is absolutely ruins which makes this chapter unbearable to play. After that, while some areas look good from afar, going through them I felt like I was lost in a maze. Frustrating layouts and dark as hallways made it very confusing to figure out where to go next. This chapter was such a drag to play, like it went on and on and on and then… Wooden planks? Did I just stumble into a wooden cottage? What is this place? Is that Alex and… Oh no. We're in Eli's den, aren't we? Okay, I want someone, anyone, to tell me why the fuck is there a door in Nova Prospect that leads to a wooden cottage that leads to Eli Maxwell's cave? Then we find Eli at the end, probably spaced out from all the drugs he did. Touching this door, we get teleported to Vault 101. Yeah guys, this is Fallout, didn't you know? So this vault thing is bugged to all hell. The button didn't work and it didn't do whatever it was supposed to do but just moved very slightly. The locked door behind the vault takes us to this huge ass train room. Then of course the mod throws two chopper boss battles at us, back to back. Each of them took almost 10 hits of the rockets to die and yes it does feel stupid as it sounds. I pressed the button and it said to get on the train because it's going. How? Mod? How do I do that? Mod, you're making me a very angry man, Mod. Why are you doing this to me? I no clipped to the top of the train and it moved at the amazing speeds of one mile an hour. I'm not gonna lie, it took an eternity to reach the end. Now in a very surprising turn of events, this whole scenario of Gordon getting on a train in the prison and then reaching the air exchange on it is very accurate to one of the original storyline drafts. This was the first thing in my hours and hours of playthrough of this mod that made me genuinely impressed that it got at least one thing right. The air exchange however looks completely different and by different I mean it's just a normal beta map now. No more trees or wooden structures or anything like that, just the classic map with a one shot sniper and a kid. What followed was your usual stroll through the classic Air X maps with the best use of bloom I've ever seen. Especially in this room. My fucking eyes are bleeding. And don't you just love it when the enemy looks like a dot on the screen and can hit you easily but you can barely hit him? I do too. I'm going insane, this is a cry for help. Anyway, the air exchange maps have the usual problems as before. Sure, in most places it has been upgraded a little bit visually, but gameplay wise it's still a confusing mess to experience. And that's expected when you base a level of your mod on an unfinished map from the beta. I don't really know what happened here, I think the game bugged out and the next level didn't load, like the whole thing about jumping out of the tower is removed. So naturally, I checked out what map was next in the sequence and lo and behold, it's Lost Coast again. God fucking damn it. Even Odell is disappointed. After that is the Borealis map. Now it doesn't look like a bad drug overdose like before. And we start off with the minigun in the inventory. Man I love the part in the beta where Gordon whips out his minigun and starts mowing down a billion combine soldiers. Now replace minigun with dick. Relax liberal, it's called dark humor. After again finding nothing much of interest, I went ahead to the next map which was... Palace? No crack and base this time I guess. But yeah, this sure is the palace map alright. So in the mod, this map was titled C23 Palace, right? C24? Is C24 Word? How were they gonna have both the palace and the vertigo chapter together? I have no goddamn idea. 
A lot of the vertical maps from the leak suffer the same issue as the air exchange maps. They're not designed to be used in a game like this. They're unfinished obviously, the layouts are a mess and overall just don't feel that good to play regardless of how much I like them visually. Rooftops. It even has a citadel now. Not gonna lie, after playing this rendition of the rooftops, I really started to miss the previous one as that one looked much better. Okay, so from the rooftops we go to an E3 map. You know, the absolute unhinged way this mod is laid out and planned started to get to me. Someone spent a lot of time and effort trying to put this all together but I feel like their plans were either too ambitious or outright insane. So this is where version 4.0 ends and... Whoa, okay, okay, this is what I like, a proper menu background. Alright, roll the dice, let's play. Oh look, new zombie textures and fancy zoom textures too. And it's raining. Could this be it? Could this be the point where things start to make sense and the mod finally has consistency? Look at that, new model for the gravity gun which is based on the phase gun. And the laser sight USP is back. But hey, the textures in the maps now blend in together very nicely. This map right here has a proper feel to it, a real nice atmosphere. This, this is promising to say the least. This part isn't covered in total darkness and that's nice, but let's move on to the main part, the story maps. Oh, goddamn, would you look at that? Now this is what I wanted more in this mod, new and original maps that look dark and gritty, absolutely filthy and are packed with all sorts of dirty looking shit. I love this. This is the atmosphere I want throughout the mod. Okay, the terminal map. Again. But hey, as long as it all looks consistent with each other, I like it. Proper skyboxes, good environment lighting. Most people might not like this, but the hardcore dark and gritty beta fan will love this sort of stuff. Hmm, the citadel's missing again. Remember that alleyway they added in this map which I said was of very low quality? Well they improved it now, this part actually looks like it was part of the original terminal map. With such a strong start, my hopes were high for the rest of it. And we're back at Fabrication Street. I mean, this still doesn't make sense being here but okay. Version 4.91 is where I believe this mod started to take proper shape. I feel like the team behind the mod really took a good hard look at the mod and each other and decided to stop fooling around and actually make something really good. The fact that they were able to make all these maps look consistent with each other is a big accomplishment. Even this new Manhack arcade exterior location looks good. But no fucking way did they make the passages so narrow that the player can't pass through. No way. The insides of the arcade is pretty much the same beta map but holy fucking shit now this door does lead to Kleiner's lab. And bargain bin Marlon Manson? Who the fuck is this? And holy shit. Alex is back to her normal model again. Well, it's not really the original model, but it's recolored a little to resemble her beta clothes colors. Also, they patched out the giant hole in the wall. Good job. Dr. Kleiner now uses the Dr. Court head. Court was basically what Kleiner looked like early in the game's development. His clothes are a little bloody for some reason though. Also, the flashlight doesn't affect his head. Nice. Some of the HD textures in the map are now gone. Why would they remove that? Like this board looked great with the high resolution textures it was using before. We do the whole teleporting sequence and right as we're about to be teleported, it cuts off. Next map, it's Boxcar Joe and his secret wet oily lover again. Now I'm not gonna dance around the elephant in the room. While visually a lot of this mod now looks better than before and even great in some cases, there are still a lot of gameplay issues, especially in the later half of the mod. Like for example, early versions of the mods Raven Home looked like this but now it looks like this. This is what you call a proper cinematic remaster. I love this, not this. But then the first room you enter has a fast zombie in it and right outside is a sniper. While this version did fix the broken combine soldiers and their over the top damage stats, they somehow don't miss any of their shots like they are laser focused with their aim. So you're still bound to lose a lot of health if you don't find cover quick. Also, the snipers are still able to kill you in one shot, regardless of what difficulty you're playing on. 
I really liked this version of Raven Home though, it felt like the early versions but had an original twist on it. I liked the combat encounters too with the zombies, even though some of them were slightly irritating but still. Oh, and the caves played out like they usually do, nothing too out of the ordinary, apart from this eyesore of a ground texture I guess. Highway 17 Again, this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of overhaul that shows that the people behind it have a plan now. There's a rhyme and reason to the design. But I do have to admit, the episode 2 textures they used in the 3D skybox, you know, those mountains, do look a little out of place when you realize it has a lot of greenery on it, like trees and stuff. Even though we're going through the literal wasteland of this world. And they used this spire skybox a lot in this mod. A lot of the maps also have this greenish tone mapping on it, which honestly I like, but I know it feels like a total exaggeration of the atmosphere they're wanting to present. It doesn't feel as natural as I thought, but hey, I guess it does feel cinematic. Also the place where you fight the gunship, the basement had like beta artwork on it for some reason, like the concept art pieces are just plastered on the walls there. But yeah man, on what I was saying earlier, the whole dark and gritty thing is really exaggerated and it definitely is an acquired taste. Some might feel this feels bland and some might shit their pants. And the mod doesn't stop its heavy reliance on the beta maps to be used as its own maps. Like right after the gunship fight, the map that plays out is a cut Highway 17 map from the beta. But what I appreciate in this version is that there's no more jarring feeling, jagged feeling of moving from a retail map from to a beta map or an original map. Consistency is what's been added now. Like, it all connects together visually, which was seriously lacking in the previous version. The next map, even though it was in the beta, just slightly different, is just the crane section from the retail game. Overall, I really liked the whole Highway 17 section of this specific version. Like, it had very little issues if you look at the whole picture and visually felt unique enough to be interesting. Oh yeah, the shotgun model is different now. Or I guess it's the same model but now has the folded stock on it. And the AR-2 is, well, an actual AR-2. And the revolver has some really fancy animations on it. At first, I thought that the revolver and the AR-2 were taken from Entropy Zero, but that's not the case since this is from 2014 or 15 and EZ came out two years later in 2017. The prison map, like before, look kinda good but play like garbage and are the weakest part of the mod. But thank god they removed that bullshit door is locked map from this version. Then the air exchange's starting map had a lot more fog and trees in there and the sniper was still there too. That one shot killing bastard. The rest of it was fancified along with the lines of cinematic mod and thank god the HDR bloom is fixed now. They also added back the tower part but now you don't jump out of it but instead teleport out of there. Then this mess of a beta map is used as a layout but now it has fog. The air exchange is again held back by the mod not doing anything about its layout. I'm not saying to change the entire map's layout, but add in obstacles, signposting, hints and shit to let the players know in which general direction they have to go in. The later AirX maps have a lot of wide empty spaces that you get lost in and find nothing of value apart from big or long empty rooms. And no, the visual overhauls done in these later AirX maps aren't as cinematic as I thought they'd be. The most I noticed was some replaced textures and of course lens flare on every fucking light source. The Borealis chapter I played felt like nothing of value was added apart from the lens flare of course. I usually find the original Borealis maps quite irritating because of their congested nature, so I just didn't bother with the rest of it. Vertigo makes an appearance again, but this time around, it doesn't have a 3D skybox, so it feels like you're floating in the middle of the abyss. Street Wars started off in a map which I think is called Cremator or Cremator Test in the beta. I think this was supposed to be a test map to see the cremators in action, but the mod takes it and gives it a visual overhaul and of course adds in a few cremators for good measure. I don't know why, but I feel like this map was taken from the mod Cremation. They have striking similarities between them. Anyway, then it shifts to a beta map from 2003. Now I'm not sure about this one, either this was a test map or an actual uprising map that was cut in 2003. But again, there's a drastic shift in the architecture and the visual style the mod was going for and the map is just not fun to play. Like at the end you're bombarded with fire from all 8 sides and die instantly if you don't have god mode on. 
then after this we're teleported to the retail maps, which again ruined the whole beta recreation purpose this mod is supposed to have. Like the first map had this brick textures everywhere, then we moved to a European style map and now we're in a retail map which is literally Sofia, Bulgaria. Next map is the classic sleeping Alex in the helicopter map, and once again another beta map with not a whole lot interesting going on. If version 491 was one step forward, then version 530 is two steps back. There were two more versions between 491 and 530, but honestly, I just don't care at this point. In this version, a lot of that consistency that the mod was starting to have seems lost as the tone mapping greatly shifts from chapter to chapter, the enemy AI is completely nerfed, and Alex is wearing round glasses for some reason. The one and only thing I found interesting was this intro sequence where G-Man and Gordon are standing on a hill and suddenly the landscape changes to this combine hellhole. This is inspired directly from an early variation of the game's intro that Mark Laidlaw wrote, but all of it is very roughly presented and it leaves you wishing G-Man actually said something instead of repeating his last lines from Half-Life 1. While the City 17 parts of the mod still look good, and by that I mean they didn't change a whole lot, the canals chapter is still an insufferable mess, there's a literal chopper in front of you and you can't do shit about it apart from, you know, dying. This new wasteland section was one hell of an eyesore with the same two textures repeating everywhere. Raven Home still had that dumbass sniper in it. Ivy 17 surprisingly looks a little better than before as they turned down the tone mapping to make the colors pop more. I don't know what this was, they still shoved in Lost Coast, the prison chapter still sucks, the air exchange still has that dumbass sniper, Borealis, Vertigo finally had a 3D skybox added to it, but now it feels like that the Vertigo tower is almost as tall as the citadel itself given how small the city looks from up here. Street Wars in this version, instead of using the Cremator test map, now uses a map called Camo Test from the beta, which was basically made to test the camouflage function of the camo soldier types. And right after the Camo Test map, we go to a retail uprising map. Man, what a fucking letdown. Build 2046 actually held a special place in my heart. Almost four years ago, I saw a couple of screenshots and I imagined it to be one of the best looking mods ever made. I purposely didn't look at more screenshots or videos because I was excited on such a level that I wanted to play it myself first. I wanted to experience it firsthand before anything else could spoil it for me. But I just couldn't experience it because I couldn't install it. I didn't know which version to get. Basically. I was imagining a mod that didn't exist. I was imagining Build 2046 to be something more than what it actually is. That's why I deem it my ultimate letdown that I myself caused in a way. When I announced this series and said that part 2 will be about Build 2046, I genuinely thought that there might be a whole lot of good stuff to show you, but when I did extract the 77GB archive and started playing, my plans were shot down immediately and I had no intentions on changing my plans or going back on my words and promise. A dozen or so hours of playing this, I finally made a video. This video. This is the part where I share my overall thoughts across all the versions, overall experience. I can't even say that this mod had potential. What could have been expected from a mod that had such weak foundations to begin with? Only in version 491 is where it started to look like they had figured stuff out, but by version 530, it was back to the same nonsense as before. Now, on a side note, I do need to say that I don't have anything personal against the people who created this. In fact, some of them actually reached out to me before I made this video and they all sound like pretty chill people. But I gotta point out and say something if I don't find something good. So if you were part of the D-team, I hope there aren't any harsh feelings. I do acknowledge that you put in a lot of work, but a majority of that effort resulted in not a whole lot of good stuff repeatedly shifting between retail and beta maps, 
American and European looks while adding in the bare minimum to improve those maps is the biggest flaw this mod had. Changing up the enemy AI and the weapon models and the character models in every single major update must have been so irritating for people who might have followed this mod's progress at the time. It must have been very plain and simple for people to see that this mod didn't have a direction in the slightest and they just kept rolling with it. Plus add on the accusations of the mod stealing maps from other mods, which I can't confirm is true or not, further ruins the whole thing. I would honestly not recommend this mod to anyone. First issue being it's hard to find, but if you do find the same archive I did, it's a 50 gigabytes download that turns into 77 gigabytes when extracted. Second issue is that there's not a whole lot of value in there that you can't find in other recreation mods like Dark Interval, Raising the Bar Redux, Cremation, Coterminus, and so on. In an alternate world, Build 2046 would have been an amazing way to experience the leaked version of Half-Life 2. Imagine maps based on the beta, extremely detailed and atmospheric, and over the top like cinematic mod. These are all things that sound good on paper, but in execution, the ball got dropped hard. And that's Build 2046. Almost. You see, Build 2046 didn't exactly die off after version 5.3.0. The D team was renamed to the Nervin Halle team and Bill 2046 became Der Schwarze Nebel, the Black Mist or the Black Fog. So there's one more chapter in this story. Thanks for watching and a big thanks to these benefactors for supporting the channel. HPR, Hopcopies, Unusual, Taylor, Wuflo, Scooms, Aoi, Nicholas Go, Imperial Embers, T-Boy 301, Tombstone, Jack 5282, Tyvenesium, Quiltman, 501st Clone Boy, Interloper CS, TTG, Robocop, Noel, Franco Senlehi, Justin Imbergriff, Tedasaur, Otacon Nachos, Lamdre, Roadkill, Walter, Noclick, Geode, Fisher Grice, Hawk Assault, Mistress Babon, Jelen, A Normal Street Lamp, TRR Droid, and Bipolet. Thanks again, and I'll see you in part 3 of this series.